Society for Veterinary Surgery. I welcome you all the participants for this seventh webinar of Indian Society for Veterinary Surgery. Equine abdominal disorders are difficult and sometimes challenging to diagnose through the imaging techniques. Radiography of abdominal disorders in equines is not feasible due to bulky abdomens. Therefore, ultrasonography is the only imaging technique which is non-invasive and safe for imaging of the abdominal organs in large animals with ease. Dr. Adarsh Kumar, Professor and Head, Department of Veterinary Surgery and Radiology, College of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Palampur, has significant expertise of performing the ultrasonography and diagnosis of uh, abdominal disorders in equines through ultrasonography. Now I request Dr. Adarsh Kumar to deliver his webinar on equine abdominal ultrasonography, a diagnostic update from basics to logical decision making. Dr. Adarsh, Sir, please unmute your mic, sir, please. I'm audible now. OK. Good evening, everyone, the viewers and the listeners. This is Dr. Adarsh. I'm from Palampur, located at 1500 MSL, a mountainous place, having temperature. Thankful to Indian Society for Veterinary Surgery and the INTAS who are round the clock working in a lockdown for arranging such an educational webinars. So today's topic uh, which they have assigned to me is equine abdominal sonography diagnostic update from basics to logical decision making. Now when I say equine abdominal sonograph sonography with such a you know uh, big uh, lines or two line of the title, I would rather say that I will orient my talk basically to the basics first of all, because many of uh, uh, the colleges and many of the places people are not doing the equine abdominal sonography and likewise, you know, there are a lot of there's a lot of scope of the equine abdominal sonography. So I would rather cover it uh, at a basic level, first of all, and then later we will develop uh, the seminar into a diagnostic or logical decision making kind of thing. So, as you all know, that uh, ultrasound has a proven benefits over the other diagnostic method, and it is the second most largest uh, or uh, uh, imaging format to be used in, especially in the veterinary practices. It is non invasive, it's versatile, it is less time consuming. And uh, you can perform in the horses with a, you know, where there is a lack of adequate restraint. Uh, advanced pregnancy is there, history of rectal tear is there. You can easily perform the ultrasound. And then there is definitely an accuracy in detecting various type of lesions in the variety of lesions. It is being used for diagnosis of gastrointestinal and urogenital disorders. And, you know, spectrum of diseases can be diagnosed. Of course, there are certain limitations with the ultrasound while when it comes to the equine abdominal uh, sonography, which we will discuss uh, in the due course of the time. Straightway, I'll uh, jump to the techniques. So in horses, the first technique, which is very, very popular and which is picking up in European and the, uh, the other countries is the fast or, or you can say flash. That is the fast localized uh, abdominal sonography in horses. OK, this one is the flash here. Then the complete abdominal ultrasound. That means the right and the left hemi abdomen. Then you can use, use a transrectal uh, ultrasound technique or lastly the translumbar ultrasound technique. So four ways, four different techniques are being used to, you know, do the equine abdominal ultrasonograph in horses. Equipments, I think these kind of machines now, transportable machines, they are quite available here uh, uh, in uh, all the colleges in the institutes. So those who are doing the ref practice and you require uh, basically a curvilinear transducer, you know, having uh, the um, frequency ranging from two to six and then you have curved array from five to eight, linear from uh, eight to three. 
these three transducers are you know fair enough to do the equine abdominal sonography some of the machines have a, a mechanical transducer also that also gives a good uh, also gives a good imaging format then these are the machines which basically i'm using this is a sonocyte doctor machine and uh, this is the trans uh, this is portable machine and uh, i use this basically for the uh, linear rectal transducer and sometimes i use the linear transducer of this machine also so quite easy to handle and uh, i've been using these machines from last uh, around seven years now what basically we look you know there's a lot of things you know uh, for a beginner like me when i started when i put a transducer on the you know on the abdominal cavity i always find gas it is always used to be refractive then slowly and slowly when you develop the skill what you intend to see basically you should be very clear in your mind what you intend to see from the uh, you know this sonography is not a study of or a histological study it doesn't gives you a picture of the inside it is a study of the sound signals which are being reflected back so when it comes to intra abdominal structures you are going to see of an organ you're going to see a gastrointestinal wall thickness in the structure right sometime you see the luminal contents also and then the contractibility the peristalsis of the of the organ then it's anatomical location whether it is displaced or not or it is there in the location and you find it uh, and your repeatability should be there you know time and again when you do the um, uh, sonography you should find suppose there's a right dorsal colon you should find it over there then different organs are examined of the abdominal cavity then you look for the abdominal fluid presence of the abdominal fluid and some masses if any in the abdominal but these are certain in a in a you know in a very general language these are certain things which can be seen now i'll straight away come to the right hemi abdomen and uh, the important thing see i will not give a blast view of the organs you know dr arun has very nicely uh, uh, conveyed and uh, taught the anatomy in the previous uh, uh, webinar here in the right abdomen as you do the ultrasound the organs are in situ like this you know if i start from uh, one here okay this is one here this is the cecum here right then two is a right dorsal colon here here and then three is the right ventral colon here this is right side then on four you can see the kidney here and five you can find a duodenum here and six finally the liver so these are major organs on the right side which normally when you put on certain spaces you know that now with sonography the important thing is always the topographic location you should be knowing where you are putting your transducer okay and what i have done is and what my students have done is they have taken a uh, this picture they have taken uh, this picture and they have pasted on the wall where the machine is there so when they do the sonography they see they count the rib and they see which organ they are visualizing and slowly and slowly they adapt to the sonography and the topographic location of the organs moving further the left heavy abdomen uh, left hemi abdomen may first is the liver you know the liver comes like this because it is on the diaphragmatic surface so part of liver it comes to the left side also second is a stomach here you know this is the stomach here this is the spleen here then this is the left dorsal colon here then the left ventral colon here right and the jejunum here and the descending colon here so these are the organs towards the left side i will deal these organs now individually okay now first of all i'll discuss flash flash is a quick technique of the ultrasonography where you make the windows and you see the organs okay w1 is a ventral abdominal window here w2 is a gastric window here three is a rhinosplenic window four is a left middle third of the abdomen five is a duodenal window six is the right middle third of the abdomen and seventh here is a cranial ventral thorax now 
come into the window one. Now these are the flash windows. Normally the animal should be shaved like this or clipped like this, you know, for clipping the animal, you know, sometimes the fussy owners come, you can apply the you can apply the uh, isopropyl alcohol. You can clip the hairs, apply the isopropyl alcohol or ethanol, and you can put the transducer. But when you are using a phased array or a sector tra transducer, then only you know the isopropyl or ethanol helps. But if you are using a curvy linear or linear one, you have to shave and have a liberal use of the um, uh, coupling gel. Okay, so this is a second window, third window, and the fourth window. Now this is on the right hemium domain, the sixth, fifth window, the sixth window and the seventh window. Now covering these windows, window one, okay, the window one, window one, the scanning area is the ventral midline behind Zephoid, okay, that on the ventral side, you can see the ventral side, the organs visualized would be sternal flexure, cecum, left ventral colon, small intestines. These are the organs which normally you see. Then pathologies identified are the free fluid, abnormal cecal and large intestine contents and abnormal small intestinal loop. Now how this has to be scanned? Look at here. This is how this is the direction of the scanning. This is the direction of the scanning on the ventral side window one. Now, when you put it in a window one, you can see here, this is a window one. This is the area of scanning here. When you see the window one, you can view a right ventral colon in the window one here. Okay, so you can see this and you can see the movement of this. It goes like this. Okay, and always take care because there is a lot of adiposity in the ventral region. There's a lot of fat here, so never get confused with the fat here. Beneath the fat, you will find the wall. This is the wall. You can measure the wall of the right ventral colon also. Okay, that is window one. Okay. Again, you can see at this stage if animal is affected, you know, if animal is affected, you can find a such changes here. There's a lot of fluid in the fibrin here. You can see the fluid in fibrin here. OK. In the ventral colon region, when you put you find a fluid and this is what you're going to find. Abnormal fluid has to be this. I will cover later what has to be seen in these windows. Now, now this particular case was. A ruptured one, a ruptured ulcer of the intestines. Now this was the ultrasonic funding. Unfortunately, the animal collapsed and you can see this was the ulcer which was leaking out and was resulting in such kind of built up within the uh, on the ventral side that is the window one. OK. Now all the horses have a small amount of the peritoneal fluid. Always remember that that is very, very normal. OK. And it is normally with the weight the fluid is on the ventral side, but when it is a vacuum peritoneum, you know when it is an acute abdomen, there's a lot of gases, then some of the fluid comes up on the dorsal side also by the impacted colon. So always look for certain things. Peritoneal effusion can be an echoic, can be it is hypoechoic also, can be echogenic also. It depends upon the cellularity and the protein content of the uh, fluid. Right? If there is a peritonitis and bowel rupture, it will result into a hyperechoic spots in the echogenic fluid. The previous slide which I have told you, then you can find the fibrin strands or fibrin layers or the peritoneal surface. Now these all things are to be critically examined in the on the real estate of the ultrasound. And if there is a hemoperitoneum, you know, if there is a blood in the um, uh, in the peritoneal fluid, you can find a smoky you know appearance of the echogenic fluid and there is always a swirling motion of the fluid with the movement of the intestines or the abdominal organs and uh, normally you know the when the fluid organizes you know you know as a rule when there is inflammation there is a fluid and this fluid is later on replaced by the fiber okay so when there is a fiber you will always find the organization of the fluid so the echogenicity of the fluid becomes heterogenic and sometimes you find bigger clots in the 
fluids also. So looking at the fluid is very, very important. And the other thing is uh, the beautiful thing with the coin, uh, you know, with the uh, ultrasound is that you can, when you find a fluid, you can do uh, ultrasound guided abdominal synthesis. You can see the fluid, the color of the fluid. You can send it for the similarity also. OK, so that is one of the things which can be exploited using the uh, uh, sonography in a very safer manner. Now this is window two here. Now window two, man. this is window two. OK, now this window two will give you the idea of the stomach and the spleen here. Area is nine to twelfth, middle third of the intercostal spaces. The pathologies identified are the gastric distension ulcers, gastric impaction in the splenic masses and how you are going to do the scanning in which direction you are going to do the scanning. Let's see. This is how the scanning is being done from dorsal to ventral, from dorsal to ventral like this. OK. Now this is how the stomach, you know, shares a topography with this plane. This is how the stomach lies along with the spleen. OK, remember this. This picture will tell you uh, association of the stomach with the spleen. And when you do the sonography at this side, you will find a spleen here. You can, you can find a spleen here and this is the stomach and you can measure the stomach wall also. You can see it is being measured here. OK, so this is how it looked as ninth intercostal space with window two. Window three, window three, the scanning area is, this is window three here, then scanning area is 16th to 17th intercostal space, and you will find a spleen in the left kidney here, right? Now, very important window. Here, the pathologies which can be identified are the renosplenic entrapment and LDDC, left dorsal displacement of the colon, nephritis and the nephrolytes. So this is a window here. You can see third window here and how you are going to scan here. Like, look at this. This is how your direction should be from dorsal to ventral, ventral dorsal and dorsal to ventral. OK, so that is and that those are the basic movements of the transducer. You can do fanning uh, of the area around whenever you find the you know, you find the organ or when you want to see full organ in a few. Now. At third window, this is the third window. This is how the spleen shares a relation with the kidney. Here. This is the kidney here. OK, this is the kidney here. So you can see that part of the spleen here is superimposing the kidney. So that means that you will always see kidney against the spleen. So left kidney against the spleen. Now when you do the sonography at window third, this is how it should look. This is how it should look. So this area is the spleen and this is the left kidney. You can see the margins of the capsule of the kidney here. So detail of the kidney I will deal later, but this is the kind of view you normally find when you do a scanning at 17th intercostal space, which you normally term as a window three. Window four. Now this is window four here. OK, now here that's the left paralumbar fossa. You know, the left middle third of the abdomen here you can see this is the left middle third of the abdomen so here what you will find small colon you will find the pelvic flexure left ventral colon and the left dorsal colon you will find then the pathologies identified pelvic flexure impaction which dr anur also told then colonic ileus, colonic torsion and interoception can be diagnosed with this window and you can very well see that how it has to be scanned like this. Sorry. This is how it has to be scanned. OK. OK. Now coming here, this is the fourth window here. This is again you know, the the intestines with the 
in relation. This is the left side here. Okay. Now, this small colon. Sorry. Here. So this is a small small colon here. And when you do a scanning here, you will find a spleen above. I go back the spleen above here. And when you fan it, you will find a small colon here. OK, so that is the relation with the spleen and the small colon here. OK. This is how it looks. Now this is how it looks. You can see the lumen of the small colon here. OK, this is the lumen of the small colon here. That is the small intestinal loops which you normally find the these these are the you know these one are these sonograms and these are the schematic representation of the sonograms i've made it just to make it clear that which structure is where now you can see spleen here spleen here small intestine and small intestine here and the small colon having a larger diameter okay that is on the left parallel number for now window five that is on the right hemi abdomen window five here Window 5 is a middle third of the right 14th and 15th intercostal spaces. OK, the organs you are going to visualize at window 5 are the duodenum, liver, right dorsal colon. Pathologies identified are the small intestinal lesions, strangulations and the nephritis. Now, this is how you do the scanning here from dorsal to ventral from dorsal to ventral, OK? And always remember 14th and 15th intercostal spaces. Now this is how on the right side the liver and the descending duodenum is there. Now this is the descending duodenum. You can see here. This is the descending duodenum here. OK. When you do the ultrasonogram, you will find this is the liver here. This is the liver here. And you can find the duodenum here, distended duodenum here, right? And below here is the, this one is the right dorsal colon. So what is important is the site where you are doing the, you are putting the transducer. That is the 15th intercostal space. Now this is the liver, sixth window, liver, window sixth. Okay, now here, this is window six, right click caudal. That means the right parallel number fossa here, right parallel number fossa, or right middle third of the abdomens. And here you will find cecum, right ventral colon. You know these are the major uh, abdomen, uh, major intestinal organs which are at the window six, and you can find cecal impaction, idiosecal impaction, interception, and sand impaction here. Okay. Now, this is how you do the scanning here. This is how you do the scanning here. Okay. From dorsal to ventral. From dorsal to ventral. From dorsal to ventral. So you can find a cecum here. Now this is the cecum here. You can see the cecum here. So this is the relation, the liver here, the duodenum here, and the cecum here. When you do the ultrasound, you can find a biggest viscous here, biggest viscous here with the wall thickness around 3 to 5 mm and lot of MGI, mucosal gas interface. And you don't see anything beyond the its wall and this mucosal gas interface because of the acoustic shadowing here and always remember that since it is towards the slightly towards the ventral side so there is a lot of fat deposition the fat should always be earmarked that is in the paralumbar fossa then the window 7 here you can see this is the window 7 here so here I'm talking about the flash. That is the fast localized procedure. Now area is the ventral thorax caudal to the triceps muscle. Okay. The organ visualized are the sternal flexure, liver, right ventral colon or RVC and RDC, right dorsal colon. The pathologies identified are the flexural impaction, hepatitis, 
hepatic muscles, sand impaction and the free fluid and look at the direction how it has to be done. Okay, fine. This is how it looks under Windows 7. Now this is the right ventral colon here, the wall of the right ventral colon here. OK, so you don't see beyond. You can see its wall and you can see this is a mucosal gas interface and nothing is visible beyond this. Nothing is visible beyond this. Now, I'll make it sure you know the uh, ultrasound doesn't have a deeper penetration. So in case of large animals, and especially the horses, forget about looking deeper as you look in the small animals. You have to be superficial and you have to see certain points which I mentioned earlier, its position, wall structure, displacement, etc. etc. Okay, the presence of fluid, etc. It will develop as we move forward, but never expect a deeper lesion within the abdominal cavity to be diagnosed with the help of the ultrasound. Again, come back to abnormal here. This is window one. So you can see this is the abnormal amount of the anechoic fluid. This is abnormal amount of the anechoic fluid. So that means something serious is going on. Something serious is going on inside. There is a lot of fluid deposition. At all the windows, what you are going to see is the presence of the fluid and then here also you can find a non turgid fluid filled small intestinal loops you can see the fluid filled small intestinal loops here right? the fluid here and here these are the non turgid intestinal loops here which also indicates the obstruction going further these are the turgid small intestinal loops Without the wall thickening, there is no wall thickening. So you always look for the wall thickening whenever the intestinal loop is turgid. OK, now uh, whenever you find a small intestinal loop which is turgid and there is no wall thickening, it can be a small intestinal obstruction, it can be a small intestinal obstruction and Likewise, on the contrary, if you find a turgid small intestinal loop with a lot of, you know, marked wall thickening here, you can see marked wall thickening. You can always say that it can be a strangulated small intestinal obstruction. That is the one point you are going to look at all the windows which I have discussed. Presence of fluid, turgidity of the intestines and its wall thickness. Now, Site 3, I told you, is a site where the spleen is in relation with the kidneys. OK, the spleen is in relation with the kidneys. So when you put a transducer on window 3 at the 17 inch of the space towards the left side, you will always find a spleen. You will always find a spleen and the kidney here. But when you are not finding the kidney here, you are finding a large colon here. You are finding a large colon here. That means that spleen is displaced its excess. You know the gas filled colon has reached and is entrapped in the uh, in the splenorenal window. We call it as a splenic entrapment. Splenic and en en uh, entrapment here. So when you don't find the kidney against the spleen at window 3 instead you find this large viscous of the large colon you can easily say that is the phrenic uh, uh, splenic entrapment you know nephrosplenic entrapment and it sometimes warrants the surgery and sometimes you know conservatively if surgery is not able people they give the you know they give the roles to the animal so that the large colon is displaced from that side so this at uh, window 3 gives you a idea about the nephrosplenic entrapment. Now 
I'll come to complete uh, abdominal ultrasound. That was a fast one where quickly you can make a window and do the scan. So what we have observed that sometime 15 to 25 minutes are required to scan the abdomen and to decide whether it is a strangulated obstruction or a simple obstruction, whether we have to go to uh, go for the surgery or the conservative treatment. As Dr. Arun said that 90% of the cases they can be conservatively managed, but it gives you idea about the prognosis of the case and exact diagnosis of the case or prognostic factors within the abdomen, which determines the success of the surgery. So when we talk of the preparation of the complete abdominal ultrasound, that means you are going to do a complete abdominal ultrasound like this. OK, from point of hip to olecranon, paralumbar fossa, ventral abdomen and inguinal region. And uh, literature says that you can do two third of the abdominal scanning by a complete abdominal ultrasound. Now on the left hemi abdomen, how you are going to do the scanning? So you start from a caudal side, come towards the come towards the cranial side. OK, and your direction should be dorsal to ventral, dorsal to ventral. This is for the left hemi abdomen and this is for the right hemi abdomen. Again, from the caudal to cranial, you will come and you will do scanning from dorsal to the ventral region. This is how a complete abdominal ultrasound is being is being performed. OK. And this is a technique for the transrectal uh, uh, ultrasound here. Uh, do the tail bandaging, empty the rectum, do a very good lubrication using the obstetrical lubricant, and then 360 degree scanning till where the arm reaches. You know, you can do a 360 degree. And uh, uh, transrectal is very, very useful. You know, the things you don't see on the percutaneous or sorry, the transcutaneous ultrasound, you can see or you can visualize on the uh, transrectal ultrasound, for example, left kidney, urinary bladder, ureters, uh, the genitals, and the caudal abdominal vasculature also, you know, sometimes if they are associated with the abdominal pain. So that was the transrectal ultrasound. The other one is the translumbar ultrasound, especially for the kidneys here, you know. See, this is how you do it. So on the spine, on the left and right side, you can do the scanning for the kidneys here and you can use a linear and micro uh, micro convex ultrasound here. This is the dorsal view. OK. Then I come to organ specific, you know, we'll start from the liver first of all. So when you see a liver, you always say it is the right hemi abdomen. You know, part of it goes towards the left side also, but this is the liver here. You know, when I say H means horses, M means mules. Okay. So this is the intercostal spaces which I have or ribs I have given 8 to 15 and 6 to 15. This is liver and when you do the scanning on this side. You know this is towards the left side, a part of liver which goes towards the left side can also be scanned. And this is how the liver looks. This is how the liver looks. You can see the hepatic vessels here, right? And as uh, Dr. Jitendra Mahindra in the first webinar told that the portal veins have a fat, so they have a thicker ecogenic walls. These are the portal vein and the hepatic parenchyma here. OK, and this is the wall of the right dorsal colon. So what you are going to see here, you are going to see the shape and the margins of the lobes and the fine vascular markings. If the vascular markings are not fine and the lobes are rounded, you can always suspect something. Uh, and if there is a uh, ununiform, if there is a no, if the, the ecogenicity is not uniform, you can suspect hepatitis, you can suspect a neoplastic disorder also. Now this is towards the left side, I told you. This is towards the left side when you do. I told you a part of liver comes here. A part of liver comes here. This is the liver. Now, this is the spleen here. This is the spleen here and you can see the stomach here. OK, and this is the color doppler of the liver when you do it from the left side. Also. Now this is you can see the rounding of the right liver lobe here, right? The margins. This is evident when there is a hepatitis, when there is a hepatitis and always and always mind it. Diagnosis is not 
the ultrasound only. Diagnosis is a concoction of all the parameters, including the physical examination and other ancillary tests. Always record your diagnosis, just not only on the base of the ultrasound, make a larger picture of the diagnostic techniques. Now we can see the uh, this is the dilated bile duct along with the portal vein here. Now this dilated, if such kind of uh, um, lesion you find, we call it as a parallel channel sign. Parallel channel sign, you can see the arrows, you know. And uh, this occurs when there is a obstructive hepatolithiasis, which is one, is a, one of the common condition in case of uh, horses, hepatolithiasis. So uh, the obstruction has, you know, uh, dilated the bile duct here and you can see the bile duct and the uh, portal vein together we call it as a parallel channel sign okay and these are the hepatoliths here you can see the hepatoliths here within the duct okay bile duct in the right liver lobe and you can see this region here this region here which is showing a a different ecogenicity as that of the other lobe OK, so this is a space occupying lesion uh, within the right liver lobe. When you come to the cecum here, the cecum on the right hemiabdomen lies here. You know, this is the cecum here. This is the cecum here. And this is when you put a transducer over here, you can see this cecum, large viscous here. You can see the large viscous here. OK, this is the descending duodenum. OK, and the cecum here and you can mark the wall thickness. Here. This is the wall thickness. OK, this is the wall of the cecum here. So and here you can see this is imaged at 15 intercostal space and you know there you can find a large oblong cecum here. You know, this viscous, you know, extends up to the paralumbar fossa to the 12th space here and a lot of fluid inside. OK, and here you can see that within the cecum you find a fluid you find a fluid and is separated by a ecogenic line here and beyond that you find a hypoecogenic structure so this is the obstruction or intraluminal mass or impacted mass which you know which we normally refer to as a coprostatic obstruction so this is the obstructed mass here and cranial to this the lumen is filled with the uh, the fluid and the third space is being created. You are lucky enough you find such of the findings in the, uh, uh, you know, in the uh, intestinal tracts when you do the sonography. Then of the dorsal colon. So dorsal colon is right over here. It is over here. RDC over here. This is, this is the RDC. Okay. Now, when you do the scanning here, you can see uh, this is a lobe, anterior lobe of the liver, or you can find below this is a right dorsal colon. This is the right dorsal colon here, right? And you will always find a MGI and always go for the thickness of the wall. Always go for the thickness of the wall. Thickness of the wall is defined i will show one slide how much is the thickness of the and it should not go for example cecum it is three to five it should not go beyond seven if it is seven you have to look you have to see whether the thickness is diffused or focal whether it is diffused or focal so you have to examine the wall throughout its course and find out whether it is focal or diffused thickness should is you know, it is there of may of the horses and the mules. It is defined and should not go beyond certain limit. Now this is a colonic torsion and you can see the peritoneal effusion here and see the wall here. See the wall here, the thickness of the wall, how much of the wall is being thickened and you can see a lot of you know, sequestration of the fluid within the wall of the sec. Then uh, the ventral uh, colon here and uh, point I have uh, the so point which you take away from here is that when there is a stasis because of the ileus obstruction or the strangulation, the intestinal contents 
eventually they become hypoechogenic to anechoechogenic with the sedimentation. Initially, the you know you will find a mixed echogenicity of the fluid line as you know the stasis prolongs. The heavier metal settle down and the fluid comes up, which leads to hypoechogenicity of the contents of the fluid. Then within right hemiabdomen, this is the right ventral colon here. This is the right ventral colon here. So you scan in this region. And this is how the right ventral colon will up look like. You can see the movement here. This is a normal peritoneal fluid because slightly you are going towards the ventral side here. OK, so movement. Actually, the thing is that with ultrasound, you've got to be patient. You've got to be patient. It is not like reading X-ray and saying that this is the lesion here. You've got to be very, very patient. You put, have to put a transducer, sit on a chair or a stool, put a transducer, look for the movement, and then only you can make up your mind. Then the duodenum. Look, duodenum is here and goes like it descends like this. You can the area which is you know you normally find is here, 16 to 17 intercostal space or 15 to 17 intercostal space in the mules and you can very well see here the liver on the anterior side on the cranial side then the duodenum here and then the right dorsal colon here now duodenum always appears circular loop you know and with having some of the material inside and if you keep a transducer on the duodenum you can see the movement of the Duodenum or propulsion of the ingesta through the duodenum, and here you decide the movement of the duodenum here. So it changes the shape from oval to round, from oval to round. Here you can see this is a round one. It is partially collapsed duodenum. So that means ingesta has passed, and when it is oval, that means it is passing through. So look for the movement here. And this movement will define whether there is a stasis or not. And it is always a real time scanning as you always, uh, as you all know, know. Now this you can see, this is the duodenal distension and hypomotility. You can see the distension of the duodenum here and you find that there is no movement here. There is no movement here, okay? Then you can see the wall here. The wall of the duodenum is thick. You know, it is very, very thick here. It is very, very thick here. No, this is a common condition in case of a recurrent colic. So whenever there is a recurrent colic, uh, you give the treatment, animal becomes OK. Then after certain days, again, the bout of the colic starts. Then you again give the treatment, animal becomes OK again start. So whenever there is a recurrent colic, always look for the duodenal technique. Then coming to the kidneys. Little bit time. Okay. So kidneys here, you will find here 15th to 11th region. And this is the left hemiabdomen here. So that one that is on the right side and that is on the left side okay and this is how you look at the kidney uh, it's a beautiful picture of the kidney here i think you can correlate you know just see here and here you can match if nothing is clear to you if you see the slide the structures will be clear to you and the renal cortex is a hypoechoic as compared to the surrounding tissue but more ecogenic than the adjacent medulla and the simple principle is that always remember whenever you're doing sonography whether it is canine bovine or equine one principle is that you can say my cat loves sunny places m is the renal medulla my cat is the renal cortex loves l is the liver sunny s is a spleen p is a places p is a prostate so as you proceed from my that means the kidney medulla to the prostate the echogenicity of the organs there increases 
ecogenicity of the organ increases. So my cat loves sunny places. Some of the sonographers, they say for my cat loves sunny places. For means fluid, least ecogenic. OK, but whenever you're seeing uh, soft tissue organs, follow a principle. My cat loves sunny places. OK. Now this is the cortex here. You can see the pelvis. The kidney is different from the canines because whosoever is doing the, uh, the sonography, he is doing for canine and for the, uh, the bovine also for equine also. But whenever you do uh, kidney sonography, always first look into the anatomy of the uh, kidney in the different species and the species differentiation also. So this is how the kidney looks like. And this is uh, a more clearer picture. Uh, and uh, to your uh, knowledge, this picture is taken by a volumetric probe uh, or 4D transducer. This is the 4D transducer. So this is how the image is being created here. So you can see the renal pelvis here. This is the renal cortex here. This is the capsule here. This is the capsule here, right? Then the renal cortex, renal pelvis here. These are the renal pyramids here. And uh, you can easily, you know, uh, see the kidney and find out if anything wrong. Even you can go for the uh, vascularity study of the kidney also. So look at this kidney in the horse. You can see this is the spleen here and the kidney, left kidney is having a mass, a renal mass over here. OK, then you can see this is the kidney here. This is the acoustic shedding. You can see this is nephrolith. Nephrolith. So formation of lith, they are common in draft horses. It's quite common in draft horses. Then coming to the stomach. Stomach is on the left side here from 8th to 13th rib. 8th to 13th rib. Stomach will give you the idea. Now the stomach is full like this as 12th intercostal space. The good thing with the stomach is that whenever a colic comes, case comes, you put your transducer at 12th intercostal space, look for the stomach. You can find that whether there is a reflux, gastric reflux or not. By doing sonography of the stomach, you can find a fluid built up in the stomach and accordingly you can decide whether there is a gastric reflux or not. And accordingly you can do a nasogastric tubing to take out the gastric reflux. OK, here the wall thickness of stomach is also very, very important. It is it should not exceed beyond 7.5 mm. If it is beyond 7.5 mm, you can always say that there is a gastritis. There is a gastritis, which is quite common in case of equines, especially when they have the wobble flies. Now, the next slide. Now, this slide shows the relation of the stomach with the spleen here. The relation of the stomach with the spleen. You can find these are the gastric contents here. So there is a MGI or mucosal gas interface or fluid gas interface uh, here and you can see you know the specs of feed. you can see this feed floating in the uh, stomach. Now here. You can see the extent of distended stomach with the fluid and it has extended to a level that it has displaced the spleen backward. It has displaced the spleen backward. It has distended so much. And it should be at 12 to 13, but it has almost reached the 16th intercostal space, pushing the spleen quadly. OK, now this happens in case of the anterior enteritis. It happens in the anterior enteritis when there is a huge fluid built up within the stomach because of the reflux in the interior intestines. Now this is again the evidence of the free fluid which is you know considered normal here. 
Now this you can find a uh, thickened duodenum here. Okay, again distended stomach here. Clear, there is a gastric reflux. So immediately the nasogastric tube has to be placed. This is again a sonographic image of the anterior enteritis with the impaction here. This is, you can see distended loop of the ascending duodenum, you know, and almost you know reaching the middle of the liver here. So position of the organ is very very important. And this is the gastric structure you can see at the wealth intercostal space. You can find if you go to the ventral side, you will find a lot of fluid here. When it is taken out, you will always look for the acidic pH here. Then the spleen here. Spleen is on the left side. I told you while I was dealing with the, the uh, flash. This is how spleen looks and this is the gastrosplenic vessel, which is, uh, you know, this is normal spleen and this is the uh, the gastrosplenic vessels, which is seen in association with the stomach here. This is a splenic mass within the spleen. You can see the mass over here, you know, and normally when the splenic mass is there, the sonologist will always say a spot space occupying lesion, but such kind of masses they are found when there is they are suggestive of lymphomas. So I told you about this again, referring back to my previous slides, which where I talk of nephrosplenic entrapment. Now this is normally how the spleen and the left kidney should look like. This is normal a representation in a normal animal, the relation of the spleen and the kidney. But whenever there is a nephrosplenic entrapment, you will find a spleen here, but you won't find a kidney. Instead, you will find a colon here. That is the large colon here. That means there is a displacement of a large colon towards the dorsal side, which has pushed the spleen forward and the kidney has gone backward to the uh, the colon. OK, so this is how you diagnose the nephrosplenic entrapment at window three. Then the left dorsal colon. Now here below the stomach, below the liver and the spleen, you will find the LDC left dorsal colon. This is the left dorsal colon here. So this is spleen and you can see the left dorsal colon here. There's a lot of gas inside that is at the 10th intercostal space here and the jejunum here. Then the ventral colon. So this is the dorsal colon, left dorsal colon, and this is the left ventral colon here. So left ventral colon will look like this. You can find this structure here. But when you look at the uh, sonogram perfectly, you can find the image. You can find the wall and you can measure the wall. And always remember, as in previous webinar also, they told you that whenever there is an inflammation of the wall, there it is marked by the submucosal edema. That's why there is a thickening of the wall. So thickening of the wall increases and you will find an extra line, an echoic line within the wall referring to a condition that indicates the inflammation. OK. Look at this is the LVC infection here. Inflamed wall. You can see this is the inflamed wall here. This is the in you can see this is the anechoic line you can always find here, which normally is not visible. Right. This is the inflamed wall of the look at here. This is the inflamed wall of the left ventral colon here, right? And the ingesta inside, which is giving a strong acoustic shadow. Then the jejunum that is on the left hemi abdomen, you will find a jejunum somewhere over here, just below the spleen. So you will always find a smaller loops here. These are the smaller loops here at the 14 intercostal spaces. Now 
this is a very good uh, uh, picture of uh, the a full uh, full. This is Gigino Gigino. You always call it as a bullseye appearance or a target uh, uh, lesion. You can see this and this is in the uh, longitudinal uh, view and this is in the transverse view. The another this is Gigino Gigino intussusception. You can see the inflammatory fluid here. You can see a thickened wall here. You can see the wall is having edema over here. So this animal you find a fluid you want. You find a wall thickening. You find a uh, a motility and cranial abdomen is showing a swirling movement that gives you an idea that this horse needs a surgery. OK, beside the other tests which you normally do to decide whether to go for a conservative treatment or the surgical treatment. OK, but what is happening inside in the abdomen? By sonography, you will get an idea. You will get an idea, and it is no doubt a very beautiful instrument, uh, uh, you know, modality to even do a post-operative monitoring. While I operate the colic, I always tell at least for three days you do the scanning of the abdomen to see the, you know, the, whether the fluid is going off, uh, whether the thickening of the wall is coming uh, to normal, the fibrin is. Uh, is not there. The peristaltic movement and the contracture of the organs have started. So post operative use of sonography is also very, very important. You can see this. This is a strangulated uh, small intestinal lesion. You can see the bunching of the intestine. They are shoved toward the one side. It is a bunching here and the wall. You can see such a reaction. It is all hypoechoic and turgid and turgid. So this indicates a strangulated small intestines. It is thick and they are edematous, hypoechoic walls are there and when you keep the transducer for a certain period of time, you won't find the peristaltic activity. That means there is a stasis or there is an ileus. So this indicates the strangulated small intestinal lesions. This is again the loops of the jejunum here and it is this is obtained by the uh, the transrectal uh, uh, probe. Then coming to descending colon here, this is also very important. So this is when you do it, you will find the descending colon like this, right? And the spleen over it. And this is the obstruction of the descending colon. So you can see this is obstructed mass here. This is the obstructed mass here. Nothing is visible beyond it. Nothing is visible beyond it. A caustic shadowing. A caustic shadowing. And you can, you know, descending alone, you can do the parietal examination also to confirm. Now, this is how it looks like, you know, when you operate. This is what has come out from the descending cologne. These are the patches and necrosis. So I told you that the uh, normal thickness is 2.6 to 9.4. That means for the mules and for the horses, 7.5 से ऊपर नहीं जाने चाहिए stomach की और duodenum की cecum up to 4, right ventral colon up to 3, LVC 3.1, uh, uh, right dorsal colon 3.7 and uh, left dorsal colon 3.7, right dorsal colon 4.1. Still, lot of work is going upon for standardizing the things. I'm telling you the my values which we have done in uh, mules in, in the mules. And if you talk of uh, the larger horses, you should refer the work done by Barton and the Reef. They have come up with certain calipering of the uh, various uh, uh, organs of the uh, parts of the intestines. Then this is the peritonitis due to rectal tear. I'm very common here. This is the peritoneal fluid. You can see the inflamed peritoneum here, you know, the ventral abdominal masses. And this is the free fluid, peritoneal fluid here. Okay. And this is the hypoechoic ingesta. And when animal collapsed, you can see this kind of fluid is always there. You know, this is the, so. Look at the fluid here, and you can see here. You always find a cellularity here. It's not a clear fluid. Not a clear fluid. Kind of fluid here. Then the bladder. 
Now, never confuse bladder with the abscess of the abdominal cavity. Reason being that the urine in case of equines is ecogenic, is ecogenic, okay, because of its uh, composition here. So you find an echoic urine here, sludge here, if I go to another slide. Now this is ecogenic urine. This is ecogenic urine. And here also you can measure the wall. It should not exceed beyond 5 mm, you know. Here, this is ecogenic urine. So never confuse it. It looks like abscess or a pus, but it is not. It is a normal looking bladder of the uh, normal looking urine of a normal animal. This is a euro abdomen here. This is a euro abdomen here. This is the wall here. And you can find a leakage. If you put a transducer for a certain period of time, you'll find the leaking from the from the rent which has occurred here, resulting into a euro abdomen. A cystolith. You can see this is a lith in the bladder, and there that is the acoustic shadowing. This is how you differentiate between the lith and the other lesions. Uh, adrenal is also visible. Uh, adrenal is also visible. Uh, you can uh, see this is the uh, by the per rectal examination on the left. This is the left adrenal. The per rectal examination, you find the kidney and you can see this is the adrenal cortex here, the adrenal medulla. Okay. So adrenals can also be visualized, but by transrectal probe only. As you do a 360, scanning within the rectum. So I would give you a closing remarks here that uh, ultrasound is a valuable imaging modality when it is used in conjunction with the other clinical and diagnostic uh, findings. Then you always look for the distended or the turgid intestinal loops at the location of the organ which links the diagnosis towards the obstruction. Then, of course, image quality can be affected by the hydration, perfusion, and the ambient temperature also, uh, as well as sometimes the horse skin thickness also play a role. Its degree of adiposity also play roles. And hair coat, if it is very, very thick, then also it is a problematic. And ultrasound provides a key information for the proper diagnosis, prognosis, and decision making while you are dealing with the acute abdomen or abdominal emergencies or normal abdominal courses. Thank you very much. The VH can be go further. Yeah, okay. You think, sir, up live? Ho. Uh, the Okay, can I take the questions? Uh, I'm seeing the. Okay. Can I take the questions? Uh, Deepak, if you're here or Dr. Nitin is here, or shall I start from uh, one by one? Sir, no, we, we are there. there. We, Nitin, sir, okay. we are there. If you want to take okay. up, it is not a problem, but we are there actually. Okay, okay, fine. So, Dr. Krishna is asking how much is the cost required for sonography instrument? Well, it varies, you know. Uh, 
I think Devesh has given the answer 15 to 18 lakhs. You know that is the transportable machine, and if you go for the Sonosite machine, that comes around the 12 with three transducers. They can give you uh, this. Then please tell the parameter that will indicate the time of the surgery. I told you that when you do the sonography, uh, you always look for certain parameters like the built up of the fluid, right? The turgidity of the intestines, then presence of fibrin inside, nature of the fluid, peristalsis, and its displacement. And that is where you decide that it has to be dealt either conservatively or by the uh, surgical method. OK, that has gone. Uh, Deepak, if you can ask the question answer panel, I've lost the question answer panel, I think. OK, OK, it is there. Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Jitendra Mahindru, can we see the four layers of GIT wall? Yes, we can see the four layers of the GIT wall on the ultrasound, uh, but you require a uh, good uh, around 12 to 15 megahertz of the transducer machine, which will give you the uh, view of the GIT wall. And uh, I told you that it is very good when you do the, when you see for the gastric reflux also. So against the fluid, the, it is clear. The other thing is, you know, whenever the uh, intestinal viscous is distended, you always find a collapse of the wall. You always find a collapse of the wall. So whenever there is a collapse of the wall, the layers are not identified properly. OK, so you can do a zooming up over there and then you can look for it. Inflammatory, if it is wall is inflammatory, definitely there is a presence of a edematous line or edematous layer which differentiates the uh, different layers of the abdomen. Can we make out the part of the GIT involved by seeing on uh, ultrasound cases in K No, actually, uh, actually, uh, the organ identification is primarily location based. It is primarily location based, but when you see at certain location and you see the movement and the contracture, you have a defined peristaltic parameters. You have a defined wall or uh, the, the uh, thickness wall of thickness parameter also accordingly you can trace the organ up to the displaced organ i just i told you about a slide where the distended abdomen has reached uh, stomach has reached up to 16th intercostal space normally it should be up to 14th intercostal space from 12 to 14th intercostal space next question dr mahindru have asked have you encountered any case of ovarian tumor no, I haven't, but uh, in divine, yes, we uh, had. How will it look on ultrasound? Well, it depends upon the composition of the ovarian tumor. I think all the uh, tumors they have the mixed ecogenicity sometime, but I haven't specifically um, got any ovarian tumor case of the ovarian tumor in case of the uh, equines. Uh, Dishant is asking while using sector probe, if we use isopropyl alcohol, is there any need to remove? Yes, you're right. It's a very good question. If you are using a sector probe or a phased array probe, you can do it with isopropyl alcohol or ethanol alcohol only. But if you are using a larger footprint, you have to shave it. The quality will not be good. For quick diagnosis, you can simply rub. And sometimes the owners are fussy especially the show horses. They don't allow you to shave. In that case, you can try with the isopropyl alcohol. Clean it, but whenever you're using isopropyl alcohol or you're washing the part which is to be sonographed, wash it with the warm water, not with the cold water. OK. Mm. There's a lot of questions here. Good topic here. Sir, should a caudal, a caudal epidural nerve block be administered for transrectal uh, ultrasonographic evaluation? Will it help? See, yes, you can do if the animal is not cooperating. I think there is no harm. It, there is no harm, but 
normally uh, we don't give sedative drugs because under the influence of sedation, the movement of or the peristalsis is affected. But if you are doing a sonography of the pelvic organs, yes, you can give the um, epidural anesthesia. And uh, yeah, how do you anonymous? Uh, how do you diagnose and send infection in Windows 6 and 7? Now this is a good question here. Send impaction. You know, you'll always find a speckled. I mean, there is a speckled look. There is a speckled look. If you keep your transducer on the um, organ, you will always find a speckled look. If you keep it for one or two minutes, you will find the thing swirling, like you know, and you can find starry looks are always there. And the wall is compressed because of the sand impaction. And the good thing with the sand impaction is that because sand settles with the passage of time. So there is always dorsal displacement of the fluid. There is always dorsal displacement of the fluid. So look on the ventral side, you will always find a sediment and on the dorsal side, you will always find a built up of the fluid. OK, mm, can flash technique is more useful. See flash technique, uh, uh, who is this? Can flash technique be more useful in case of acute colic in equine? Yes. It is, it is. Quick shave, see the gastrophysio. If you do it at two windows, one is on the ventral side, look for the look for the uh, fluid and the gastro, uh, gastric reflux. Yes, it is very, very uh, good. Then uh, Vikram is asking, can we differentiate small intestinal ileus from small intestinal uh, obstruction. Yes, 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 uh, yes, Dr. Vikram. We can differentiate between the EDS and the small intestinal uh, uh, obstruction here, especially in case of the volvulus. Yes, yes, you'll always find. I told you whenever there is a volvulus, you place it as an, it is in a strangulated obstruction. So you'll always find a turgid inflamed wall, a turgid dilated loops. And when you scan whole of the area, you will find the collapsed loops also. Plus, there is a lot of built up within the abdominal cavity. MG and Tishant is asking MJ. Others, the next question is that uh, if you find an S, have you ever found an S carried impaction in intestine? No, I have never. never. No, 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 never. Never. What are the ultrasonic changes that you find in colic? Colic, uh, see, I told you this uh, uh, before also. Colic is a very large term, you know, and the scanning is uh, whenever you're doing a scan of a, there are two types of colic. One is false colic, another is true colic. Whenever there's a true colic, you'll always look for the built up of the fluid on the windows, the distension of the uh, lumen of the intestine, the thickening. Uh, on the wall of the uh, uh, intestines, right? These indicates the colicky, uh, strangulated, uh, especially this thing. So all of the discussion was on that point only. And then, what are the possibilities of USG guided biopsies? Yes, it can be done. It can be done. Uh, we have done of a liver uh, once or twice. It can be done whenever you find a space occupying lesion. Yes, you can do the, uh, but that has to be done under the sedation and the local anesthesia. Any specific? Uh, what are the? What are the? Jury Priya has an answer. What are the? Okay, fine. I have to already taken. Why in inflammatory condition? Yeah. Why in inflammatory condition the thickening occurred is very good question here. Inflammation has one product that is fluid. Right? Intestine is such an organ when you give incision, when you seal it, when you when you put a suture, for example, it seals within eight hours. There is a fibrin deposit. There is a fibrin deposit. So whenever there is a stasis of the fluid or logging of the fluid in the intestine because of the inflammation, and because of this fibrous thickening, there is an adhesive reaction, and that's why the thickening of the intestine occurs. 
Dr. Mahesh, can you please share any image of sand colic? Uh, I have to look, Mahesh. I if you can uh, give me your email, I will send you the server. Okay, okay. So, Dr. Satyavir, frequency is good, is good from 2 to 8, you can use. तो आया बट आदर्श रुक नहीं रहा है ना तो ठीक है तो क्लोज कर दो एनी मोर Yeah, Dishant is asking. I'll take last question, I think. Dishant, uh, Nitin, what do you say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dishant is asking for bladder only translector USG is used or is there any other technique? See, it is better to go for a transrectal uh, uh, sonography because, you know, if the bladder is uh, very much dilated, sometime you find the interior wall of the bladder on the transcutaneous one but it is better to do from the transrectal only but you have to be very gentle you know you have to not to press otherwise you won't find the uh, shape of the bladder in which it should be there because thickening of the bladder wall thickening is very very important if you give a pressure it will flatten it will flatten okay and we have seen here the cases of the bladder tumor also in case of and the lith also in case of the um, horses their wall thickening uh, is there and whenever we use a lot of pressure during transrectal uh, USG it flattens so that care has to be uh, taken okay Adash, I think Thank that brings us to the end. Thank I you very much. Thank you very much, Adash, sir, for the wonderful presentation on equine abdominal sonography, a diagnostic update from basics to logical decision making. I hope the presentation will help, especially the beginners to, under, to undergo or conduct equine ult abdominal ultrasonography and diagnose basic conditions that we encounter in our clinical practice like colic and other conditions. So I once again thanks, thank uh, other sir for his excellent presentation. The ultrasonic images were excellent and self-understanding. I further thank the president of the society, uh, Simrat Sagar sir, sir, for his constant support and help. Even executive secretary, Dr. Patil sir, for his uh, enthusiasm for his uh, all-round support. I also thank uh, Dr. Nitin Bhatia sir for providing us a platform for uh, specifically, especially Intas Animal Health for this platform for conducting webinars. I thank entire committee, executive committee for the support and smooth conduct of the webinar, especially Dr. Tiwari sir, Dr. Nilesh sir for all the support and uh, for the smooth conduct of the webinars. Uh, at last, I'd like to thank the attendees for their patience hearing and for asking us the questions to be addressed by the speaker. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you.